Welcome back to episode 21 of the Solar Crusader series, the long-awaited episode that we have been trying to build for for a while. It is finally here. We have amassed a decent amount of money. We still need more, though. I really wish we could get some more. So we will eventually get some more arenas in the future. But today is the day that our Solo Crusader himself builds an empire. Yes, it is the day that we have the Stronghold mod added onto our series. You guys have been anticipating this for so long, and we're finally ready to be able to get to it. Now, will we succeed? I don't know. But Stronghold mod has updated to 1.1 and has allowed you to build multiple bases so you can actually build your own empire. You need, obviously, increasing renown um, to make sure that you get to the point uh, I think it's up to like 15 or 15,000 renown. It's something insane. But you do need to get decent amounts of renown upgraded in order to build multiple cities. But as usual, you will have to try and defend them. So that is going to be a hard point. Now, as usual, you have to build your stronghold over 500 renown for your first one. Make sure you upgrade your donkey. Have 10k, stand on empty tile, and not have an active contract. Those are all key to building your first location. Uh, we can't build a fort right now because obviously we're standing next to or on top of another city. So, our goal today is to build up a stronghold a little ways away from our moneymaker, the arena. And obviously build it close to water. So I'm thinking up here is not a bad idea for our first location. Uh, let's see what it's going to say. I can build a port. I have everything ready. Let's do it. You strong company of attackers, we know. We have seen it happen before. Defend against one more attack. Yes. This is the hardest part, is defending your own cities. Uh, also, we can rename the settlement to the Solo Empire. Welcome to the Solo Empire. The keep is available to upgrade things. We had a really cool guy looking after our keep. Um, tavern has options as a normal tavern does. And storage is where we can store all of our effects. And we shall put in all of our cool effects that we won't be using anymore. Our major trophies, just so I don't have to keep them in my inventory anymore. These are so we can free up a few spaces. So strongholds are very good for storing stuff um, that you don't need, or that you want to use later on in your campaign. And they're also very good for storing brothers that you might not want to have around... Uh, or you try and train some up and leave them in your stronghold. So that is also a strategy there. I might just leave a bunch of these crafting items here as well. Because I don't know when I want to use them, but I kind of don't want to get rid of them. There we go. That feels a little bit better space-wise. Uh, okay, so first things first, we got to defend the place against one more attack. Enemies will attack within the next day, so we have to prepare. Um, luckily, we do have five mercenaries that will join us in this fight. I am not hopeful on their survival, but they will be better than nothing, hopefully. Uh, what do we need to do whilst we wait? I'm assuming medical supplies is not a bad idea. But we're probably not going to get very much whilst we wait. A little bit of repairs is nice. Food's gonna be fine. Now where are they coming from? If you build too close to a friendly city, I think they'll hate you for it. So you gotta be careful where you put your, uh, your stronghold. Ah, I see they are coming from the west. So, we are close to orcs. Obviously we are in orc territory at the moment. Close to goblin territory. I did not want to build in goblin territory because you guys know how much we hate the goblins. Uh, building an undead territory is slightly annoying as well. Orcs might be the right call here. So I'm really glad that these guys are after us. Uh, we will have friends, so eight doesn't sound too bad. But, as expected, there is a warlord, some warriors, a berserker, and some young. Hmm. At least we're not alone this time. That is a big... Factor indeed. We have our two-handed hammer ready and willing. I can't forget to put our necklace on. Oh, that was close. We've been doing arenas too much, so I almost forgot to put the necklace on. Uh, luckily, we have enhanced learning still available. 
Okay, we're ready. Now, we do want to stick next to... I hate clicking on the location. We need to stick next to our mercenary guards so they join us in this fight. Yep, just want to stay as close as possible. And it says some mercenaries. Good. I panicked there for a second because it didn't show an extra flag. But because the mercenaries are part of our company, they are what we own, our empire. They're on our own flag. So I panicked for a second thinking there's no extra flag. But they're our guys, of course. Why wouldn't they be? Okay. And look how cool our castle looks. We can barely see it because of how bad our vision is. But we actually have... Oh, it's old walls, but still... Cartwheels, chopped wood. Oh, this update looks great. Um, Genevieve. It's risky, but we do want to brunt a bit of the damage um, on the front lines to protect our mercenaries. Nice. Good support with fire damage and overwhelm. We get rotated by the mercenary, so he saves us. What a bro. What an absolute bro. He is probably going to die. But at least we can protect our friend. Um, oh. Oh, this is bad. I don't like any of these guys. Um, he's gonna attack twice. He's got a big weapon. I don't know who to hit. I want to swing wide, but I don't want to hit the... I think I have to hit our own mercenary. He's going to die anyways. I feel bad about hitting our own guy in the back of the head. But we need to get rid of these guys pronto. And Overwhelm will be a big boon, please. Oh, he waited. Oh, there's the double kill. They're confident. Mercenaries are not as helpful as I expected. The Spear guy is good, though. And now he's dead. Well, so much for friends. Oh, that was a good hit. We might be able to get that kill. We're probably too slow, though. He misses. He gets the kill! Hey, that's nice! Didn't we... No, we didn't. I thought we staggered him. Nice triple hit! Don't scream. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to see. Another mercenary bites the dust, and it's seven enemies. Ooh, dodging. A triple hit is always welcome. We almost have a warrior down. The mercenary is still on his last stand. I don't know how long he's going to last. They pushed through me? Well, that was weird. Couldn't kill this warrior in time. But the mercenary gets some nice hits before he goes. It was nice knowing you, man. Oh. Okay, can we please get a sweep? A double kill. Double kill, please. Yes. That's what we like to see. No stuns. We are immune. Nice triple hit. Waste your time stunning, buddy. I don't care. We can do this. Nice triple hit again. Oh, this hammer is wonderful. I might switch out to the... Flail? We are still calm. Will the Berserker chain work? Yes, it will. And we missed two 95s in a row. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the 95s to actually hit. Good hits, good hits. Ooh, we barely took any damage that fight, but that could have gone bad. There we go, we defended with beautiful experience. And uh, nothing for the loot-wise, sadly. But now we have defeated the enemies and my fort is secure. How nice is that? And our mercenaries somehow survived. 
<laughs> they just replenished instantly, so losing them wasn't a problem. Uh, but yes, welcome to the Solo Empire. It looks such a nice city as a Mott and Bailey. It's got a few little towns on the outside, and the harbor is ready to be used once we upgrade it. So the problem with uh, strongholds is they need to be defended, and they take a lot of money to upgrade. So it only took us 10 grand to get this place, but it's kind of garbage. There's a storage, there's a tavern, and it doesn't really do anything other than, you know, nothing really. Nothing available. So what we want to do to increase the usability of our fort, the benefit it can give to us as a player, is we want to add buildings and locations. So buildings are what's inside the fort. You have a maximum of five, as far as I remember. And then locations is all of the things outside. So like a blacks, not a blacksmith, like uh, like a militia barracks, like a silk farm, like a plantation, a stone watchtower, incense dryer. These sorts of things are specific to the south, so I don't know if we can get any of these ones. I don't remember seeing that before. But you can get things like die makers, not ruins, that's a broken farm. You can get wheat farms, you can get ore smelters, goat pens, wheat fields, that's the one. Uh, these guys are upgrading, so that kind of looks weird. But yeah, so the idea is you're able to build it up the way you like. You're not going to be able to get every single upgrade because that's the limitation, of course. So you're going to try and get what you want. Uh, there is a nice handy little document that the mod creator has given for you guys to get used to what things do what. And uh, as a rule of thumb that I've used is with buildings... You want to use what's going to help your party the most. Things like weaponsmiths and armorsmiths are just a good chance for you to have uh, another way of finding famed items in shops. So it's a good idea to go for weapons and armorsmiths. Uh, I also like building ports to get you around the map a lot easier. So being able to build multiple locations and allowing yourself to teleport to key areas of the map to go hunting for certain enemies or to help with quests. Definitely a port is a big one up there. Uh, alongside that, training halls are not too bad of an idea, but they're not super overpowered unless you use them and like using them in your parties and you have a lot of money. Uh, temples, I like the idea of if you can build a location in the middle of nowhere and have a temple to heal your guys instantly without having to spend time. Those are sort of the ones that I would lean towards. Or alchemist if you like the potions. Uh, so I'm not going to build a location just yet. Uh, not a building, that's inside the city. Outside the city, we get locations. So things like workshops, ore smelters, blast furnaces. Uh, usually it does explain what they do. It's not explaining it whilst we have to hover over it. That's unfortunate. Uh, but I know some of these, what they do. Wheat fields help with food? I think it generates food for you. Uh, I think ore smelters generate tools. Workshops upgrade your weaponsmith in town. I think the blast furnace upgrades your armor smith in town. Stone watch tower allows you to see around your your location, your city a lot more easily. It doesn't like what the normal game does with uh, watch towers, is it adds a group of militia there. That's not what it does to your city, as far as I've seen. The watchtower adds vision. The militia training camp is what adds an extra group of people to defend your city. So that's pretty big. Goldmine gives you a steady stream of gold slowly. Um, steady stream of crowns into your inventory. But it's very, very small. Herbalists give you medical supplies. But I always recommend going militia training camp first. Because that will help, as you can see... Uh, hopefully, our next group of militia will be bigger and stronger. So currently we have six. As the week rolls by, or whenever it refreshes, um, we're going to have a stronger party of mercenaries defending the castle, which is what we like to see. Uh, also, what do I need at this moment in time? What I would love to do is get myself an arena. So... The last thing you can do with your fort, other than, you know, adding people to it and stuff, is you can upgrade it. 
So going from a fort to a castle will give you an extra band of mercenaries to join your base and guard it. So you'll have two bands of mercenaries instead of just the one. You can construct additional buildings and additional locations. Roads to other settlements, which is very cool. It allows you to send trade to other towns. And it allows you to traverse faster across the map. And it allows your mercenaries to start patrolling around your nation a lot more easily. Uh, when upgrading, you don't have access to anything until you defend the enemies attacking it. So just like when we founded the location, uh, we will be able to be attacked immediately after we try and upgrade it. So be very careful when you found a location and when you start upgrading it. When you add little locations on, like the buildings and the locations, that doesn't warrant attacks. So I've got this militia barracks instantly, no one's attacking me. So I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I need to check my money. I do have enough for the upgrade, so let's quickly upgrade our fort. 20 grand out the window, but now we're trying to get a castle. We have two more attacks. Each attack. Ooh, that's going to be a bit rough. But as you can see, the fort looks a little bit bigger. Um, we now instead... Oh, good! Because I did the upgrade, it instantly updated the location because of our militia barracks. And we now have a master archer, a few hedge knights, many mercenaries, and a dog in the party. It jumped up from 6 to 13. So I highly recommend going militia barracks as your first building in your location. I mean, as your first location for your empire. So yes, highly recommend that. Uh, and now we will have these guys defend us in the next attack as well. Hopefully they do better than the last party that was with us, because that was a pitiful performance for the most part. Um, it is orcs again, a slightly smaller party, but I'm assuming a smaller number means a bigger person. No, it's just a weaker party. We got lucky on the rolls this time. Definitely keen on that. Okay, so this is going to be a sweep. Definite sweep indeed. And as you can see, the mercenaries love defending with us, so that is a wonderful thing to have. Now, later on, there are some really, really cool endgame things we can have in the Stronghold mod, but I don't want to spoil it just yet. Um, but get used to having mercenaries help you with your fights close to your base, because it is a lot of fun. Also, I forgot to put reds on earlier. I apologize for that. Uh, let's run south. We have a Hedge Knight with an S-Stock, and a Hedge Knight with another S-Stock, a Warbrand, and a Bardiche. We might not be able to get many kills this fight, because these guys look like they're ready. The archers are protected this time, that's the first. We have actually half decent walls. Very keen on this. Okay, yeah, of course the dog was going to die. I'm hearing a lot of pain on the orc side. That's what I like to hear. Let's get a nice stagger. Yes, good. Okay. This guy is definitely dying before he gets his next turn. Oh, you missed a 42, buddy. Oh, someone threw a net. Interesting. I wish I could see it all happening. They are destroying them. Look at that. They're down to four already, and we haven't even gotten our first kill. That's kind of a waste on our experience potion. But I'm not complaining when it comes to getting free kills. Free fights to defend our location. Now, when you're on a normal gameplay and not a solo gameplay, the fights will be a lot bigger and scarier, so don't expect it to be this simple. This is only slightly simple because of the small enemies, small allies, and how the game scales. Oh man, those hedge knights are good. Ooh. They're down to a single warrior and a behemoth. That behemoth is wrecking. He's gotten two kills. But I don't see these guys struggling for much longer. Holy crap. Holy crap, he's fleeing. It's game over. We got, what, two hits in, and it's already game over. This is our third hit of the fight. And welcome to having wonderful mercenaries in your party. 
Now, I don't believe we get XP with this, but I will double check. If these guys count as technical allies to our party, I don't think they'll give us the bonus XP. No, they won't. Didn't think so. Because they're not part of our party, they're like having a friendly army join you for a fight. Even though they're under our own banner, we still don't get XP for the fight. Uh, we did get mushrooms, weirdly enough, but okay. That was a very easy fight, and we've defended against one attack. Normally, it's meant to be one attack for the upgrades, but I think in the newest update, he made it a little bit harder. Which is fine. I think that's a good idea. Uh, ooh, is there an Alp? Can we kill the Alp? Dang it, we didn't get a free piece of uh, trophy. With the Alp event, you can get a free trophy sometimes if you kill it. You can also sometimes get injuries, so there's that side to it. Uh, but yes, as you can see, when we're upgrading the location, it does seem to be harder and harder to defend against, which makes a lot of sense. Before this update, it was a single attack every single upgrade. It's eight Marauders this time again. Uh, this time, as you can see, the two deaths of our mercenaries stood still there. They didn't get refreshed at the moment, I don't think. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Ooh, there is a champion this time. Is that a champion behemoth? Ooh. Yeah, that is a champion behemoth. Let's see how our hedge knights and master archer does this time. I still don't think it's going to be a problem for them, but it might be a little bit risky. Um, but as expected, whenever you play in this game, the allies always just randomly switch. So we don't have S-Stocks anymore. We have this cute looking guy, the golden face. He's got a Zweihander, and this one's got a chain mace two-handed. Very nice, which is a, technically a flail. It's called a chain mace, even though it's a flail. Uh, oh, and the Master Arch has a crossbow. That is nice. We have one uh, net. Oh, two nets. Very nice. I am actually kind of scared of the 1400 health uh, behemoth. So, <laughs> let's see how it goes. Did we get rotated again? Primal Fear, let's go. Yeah, there's the stun, of course. Throwing weapons. Nice, good overwhelms. Overwhelms are gonna be helpful. This guy has the drain plug. <gasps> yes! No freaking way, I didn't even notice it till now. We need this guy, we need to kill him. He has a famed weapon we need. That's big. I can't wait. We need to steal this kill somehow. Oh no, our ally's gonna ruin the kill for us. We need to somehow get this weapon. We are the Flail Master, and we need a famed flail, and it's been so long since we were able to find one. And this is the perfect opportunity. Can we get some luck going our way, please? I'll kill the young, maybe get Mr. Cunning to kill some of our allies. I'll be willing to sacrifice mercenaries for a famed weapon. Yep, I'll do that. Yep, okay, the Berserkers are actually getting some kills here. We're losing some allies. But I'm not too phased about it. Uh, can I go this way? Let a few of our allies die, just because I really want this weapon. Nice, he pushes through. I'm sorry to sacrifice my allies, but it's imperative we get this weapon. It's also imperative we stop this guy's unstoppable berserking. The behemoth isn't unstoppable, which is good. Um, but the berserker seems to be. He misses? Interesting. Uh, Berserker, what are you doing? Very weird interactions at the moment. Okay, he gets scared. 
Everyone's just adrenalining. Oh, okay, so the Hedge Knights are still pretty decent. But they did get wrecked pretty hard with those lucky hits. That could be good. Okay, Master Archer's gone. Nice. Mr. Cunning, please get a big swing in a circle. I'm just letting you do go ham, buddy. Please. Go crazy. I want to see what happens. Oh, that's going to be us. We're going to be able to do that kind of damage in the future when we get this weapon. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, please, kill everything. He's got five stacks of Unstoppable. But he's getting shot by the arrow, so that's exactly what we want to see. Um, I will go into melee now to try and work him down. No, 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 because he's trying to flee. I can't let him flee. Nice, he gets the kill, and now it's just us. Technically, there's a mercenary that's shooting us in the back of the head. Uh, do I go flail? He's got no armor, so flail is a better chance of killing him. But we have to time this correctly. Okay, so how much is the uh, archer doing on average? If he hits him in the head, it's 91. If it's in the body, it's around about 60. So he's doing 180 damage per turn. But if he gets a lucky headshot, it could be higher. It could be up to 270. Let's do the math. It's about... I think I need to go for one more swing. Get him down to 500. Let him have two turns. Yeah, he hit a headshot. 331. He got two... No, he got a single headshot and a body shot. Hmm. Never mind, he just got that headshot. I think we go for a hit. 257, he can't possibly get the kill here, right? One sixty-two. He's gonna steal our kill. We have to go for a double hit. It's the only way. But if we stand in front, maybe he gets one single hit in? We're trying to block the shot. Either I go for the shot now, and he accidentally hits us and steals it, and we get him too low. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. Let's wait for next turn. Yes, it worked! The wait was perfect! He's getting exhausted! And we get the kill! Holy crap! We get the drain plug! It's not that amazing. Oh, I was hoping it to be a little bit better. It has a better chance to hit the head, though. We have to compare it. It any any upgrades an upgrade. Our castle's secure. That is wonderful. But we have a famed berserker chain. Okay, let's put them side by side. Forty to hundred. Forty to hundred. Yeah, I saw no increase there. The durability has gone up. Okay, that's actually big for this weapon. Ignore and damage to armor is the same. The maximum fatigue has been reduced. Okay, that's good to keep on to us. And the weapon skills build up only four more fatigue. So, in all honesty, it's kind of garbage. There's barely any upgrades. But, there are upgrades. Fatigue is a nice one, and the durability is nice. So, not going to complain. I'm going to be happily adding that to our res roster retinue, our loadout at the moment. That was nice, and we timed that with so much luck perfectly. Oh, that feels good. 
And now, as you can see, we have a castle. And the castle has more options to it. So, we can start sending gifts to factions to try and increase our relations, which just means you spend money and fix up your renown with other people. So, say someone doesn't like us, we can send them some money and then they'll like us a bit more. Uh, or we can make them even more friendly. Now, as you can see, we are allied with ourselves, our solo flail empire. This is Count Tado the Castellan. This is our head of state. Basically, he's the guy that runs the castle for us at the moment when we're not there. Uh, and we tell him what to do, so he's always going to be up here. He looks pretty cool. Um, remove your castle, so if you ever want to get rid of your location, you can always do that. Uh, build roads is another option at the moment. So the closest place is obviously going to be the cheapest. Furthest place is obviously going to be the most expensive. And it does build the roads a bit not weird. It's not sort of the way you expect it to. Um, there's obviously more options as it goes along. So you can see all the cool options you get. Now, a road to Dahab would be probably a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to probably do that. There we go. 3.5 grand. Good. And now you can see a road is instantly built. And what's pretty weird but cool at the same time is roads are built over water. And it allows you to travel over the water as well. And it's funny to watch caravans drive over water. So if I built, like, my city up here, it would possibly make a road this way. Which is weird, but it works. It usually builds the road within the shortest direction. So if I was going to build a road to Brunthal, it would probably connect the road, like, here or to here. So if you're trying to build roads to further locations, it's not exactly how you'd expect it to be. If I was to build a road to Hohenschanz, it might just add here. Or it might do a weird, convoluted, long one like this. Because I have seen it do that before. Regardless, when you start getting rich, roads can be helpful, but you don't really need too many. Uh, also, you can upgrade to Tier 3. So there are three tiers of a castle. Um, we can go to a Stronghold. Now, that allows us to construct even more buildings, including the Arena. So you have to go to Tier 3 to get the Arena. Um, which we would love to do eventually. We don't have the money to get to tier 3 just yet because it's an extra 20 grand. Um, you're allowed to get extra locations. And I think you're allowed to build a hamlet as well. Yes! So a hamlet is like a, a baby town. So think of it as like a Brunthal. A very small town that gets added to the side of your stronghold. Um, like a little ways off. So like here or here or just over here. And you can build little things in those towns as well, in terms of buildings. Uh, so you can build even an extra weaponsmith, if my memory is correct. But things like wheat fields, I think you're allowed to build as well. Hopefully I'm not saying that wrong. But yes, it is cool that you can add a hamlet as well. Um, do remember you will be attacked again, probably three times. But we do need more money before we start doing anything like that. Now, the other amazing thing that you get at Tier 3 is you get unique quests. So there are three unique quests um, specific to this mod that will be unlocked at your location. They will always be there. They'll never run away. There'll be quests that just sit here until you want to do them. There's three quests that are added at Tier 3. And they offer very cool upgrades to your specific keep uh, that are permanent upgrades that you will definitely want to be getting. Uh, for this specific run, I think I only really want one of the upgrades, but I'll try and get all three, possibly, to show you guys. Regardless, our money has run low because, obviously, keeps are expensive. So let's run back to Dahab. Now, the Mercenary Party has been refreshed, as you can see. Very nice to see that they've refreshed their roster after losing so many people. Now, as it doesn't actually cost anything to look after this keep, it has its own self-sustaining survivability. Uh, the other thing you can do, which we can't see at the moment, is you're able to add people and leave them here. Uh, because our party is a party of one, we can't leave anybody at the location. But that is one of the other options you can do when you're doing your own runs. Okay, so back to making some money. to fuel our late game tendencies of spending. And as you can see, yes, that is cool. 
that the defenders of Dahab are going up to visit the Soul Empire and patrol this road. And our people will come and patrol down this way a little bit as well. Uh, gladiators. Three of them shouldn't be too bad. I'm just worried about the overwhelm. But who cares about overwhelm when you have a drain plug? That's the way to do it. Let's do it. Ah, uh, of course there's a net. There's no spear guys, which is good to see. But there is an annoying net bro. Yeah, I saw that happening. Luckily we can break out immediately. And walk back a space. Good. Yeah, there's the overwhelm. I thought you might. Let's go for a spin. With our brand new weapon. Looks pretty good. I mean, it's not that much of a damage increase. But it's still a nice weapon to have. They're stunned. We only have three stacks of overwhelm. That's not too bad. Oh, it was only one swing? Oh, that could be rough. We kind of wanted that to be a double swing. Now we're at four stacks. Okay, that's still not too bad. A stun again. Very nice. And then we get stunned. No! Oh, that sucks. That's okay. We'll survive this. Nice double swing. Easy money. A little bit worried there, but we got through it. It's just annoying that these guys are so nimble. We took one hit, and we got a crushed windpipe. Holy crap. That was a really bad hit. But we got paid nicely, and uh, let's fix our problems. There is a temple that I can quickly pay a thousand bucks to fix our problem. And we can buy some cheap food. Very nice. Uh, I'd like to buy more... Potions? Yes! More potions and knowledge. I should have popped another one before we went into that fight. But let's do that. Treated will heal in one to two days. Okay, then we will waste some time until then. Let's train while we wait. <laughs> well then, we don't have to wait that long. We get the instant fix for free. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, we have to wait till tomorrow though still, so I will train till tomorrow anyways. But that's an easy injury recover. Oh, there goes our mercenaries. There goes the caravan of the Solo Empire. That's the other cool thing. You get to start sending caravans out and then your town can get some wealth. And I think it might impact relations. But I might be incorrect. But the mercenary patrol... Oh, that's that a second one? Yeah, that's right. There's two mercenary patrols now that are defending our castle. Because we got to tier 2. I don't think it gets any higher than two mercenary patrols, unfortunately. But having two is still pretty good. And the mercenary patrols will go and defend the caravans that go out along the roads. So, go and defend our lovely things, my friends. Yeah, we're good. Time to get moving. That is some nice XP we did over the day. Uh, let's jump into another arena with a Lindworm. It's only one Lindworm. And we're getting a Gladiator gear and 4.2 grand. We'll take it. I do believe we sold a Lindworm before on this character, so we can do it again. Let's give the crowd something to cheer for, exactly. A 1v1 against a Lindworm. Uh, I think we go Hammer first, because he has a lot of armor. Not because I worry about our durability, it's because I worry about the armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Our armor's gonna get wrecked. But we need to get rid of his armor first. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, let's go into it. Drain plug, let's go. 
Mmm, that did not do much. Go for a double swing, please. I have an idea. That's risky. But if I go for a swing in a circle, I can double hit this guy. Nice. The double damage is going to work. Nice. I'm going to get wrecked with armor. But we have to survive this. Nice. Double hit. Technically, it's a quadruple hit because it's them twice. Does the Linworm share its health with its head and tail? Come on. One more. No lucky fives? Good. Oh, he's on 20 health. Ooh. Risky, risky. And that's a lot of armor. But we get the kill that we wanted. We get paid extra. And we get the cool hat. Which should be... Yep, a golden one. Very nice indeed. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> Always a little risky when you're jumping in a linworm and optionally wanting to take the acid blood to your face. So yeah, you've got to be quite careful when doing that strategy. And you have to be very confident if you want to do that strategy. Uh, let's buy an extra food because the bountiful crops are still here. And are we fully healed? I think we are. Yes, we are. Perfect. Another arena. What are we doing? The Executioner. That might be too risky. An Executioner and two Gladiators. I mean... I think we fought Executioners before. I'm just worried about the overwhelm, and depending on what gladiators it is... Ah, we should take it. We gotta prove our worth. We gotta be the one-man army. I know we have friends, and we're not just a one-man army anymore. We're the king of our own empire. From the bottom to the top, this is how we've done it. But, let's be a bit careful. Okay, so I am worried, and... Oh, crap. He's actually a champion? I thought it was just an executioner. Uh, he actually has decent armor, and he's got probably a lot of scary perks and stats. Uh, so we switch to the hammer and walk back a bit. Oh, and it's a reach flail? Oh. That's going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, so we go up, we swing... And we miss? 71 out of 70. Okay, we're dodging. That's good. And we miss another 70? No, it's a 47 because we're overwhelmed. Crap. Okay, okay, we're dodging for the moment. We get a nice knockback. Okay, that's good. We hit him in the head, which is also kind of good, but his body armor's still there. He's got fast adaptation, that's going to be annoying. He's getting close to hitting us. We get a kill, and we miss again. Holy crap, this guy is annoying. Yep, he was bound to hit us eventually. We got rattled. We got dismantled armor. We got a bruised leg, and we're staggered. After we hit him, like, what, twice? We can't do the same thing to him. No injury when we staggered him. Oh, boy. We staggered him again, and he's still is faster than us. Everyone's faster than us. Nice hit. Uh, we might go flail this time. Because he's out of armor. Nice! Good kill. Okay. Whew. Mr. Executioner is out of the way. And then there's a stun on this guy. The Drain Plug will do a good job here. And he's fleeing. Nice. With more stuns. 
Nice. Okay, that was a bit scarier than expected. But we got through it. The fast adaptation on a guy with a giant two-handed weapon is kind of scary. So we'll take that injury and try and fix that as quickly as we can. Uh, Temple is available for 580. Uh, Alchemist has another potion of knowledge. I mean, I'll keep buying them. Wherever possible. There's contracts available, but I mean, the arena's just always better. Uh, we have one more battle for enhanced learning, so let's do that. Tools are getting a little bit lower, but that's fine. Usually don't worry too much about that. Uh, here's a few coins for you. Congrats. Too bad we can't hire you. Because we don't have a juggler in the party. Uh, more gladiators again. Can you guys stop sending us against gladiators? I mean, we are technically winning, but they are technically quite risky. Really depends if they've got spears. Okay, it's axes. That's not too bad. Uh, and they've got no armor. Sweet. As usual, the cheeky AI wants to wait. That tickled them. Okay. Good, good. We only have three stacks of overwhelm. Nice. Cleaving through body. Shield walls, I don't really care. Nice. Easy kill, easy flee. I don't mind the overwhelms too much, because these guys, when they have shields, they always attack and then use their shield, so they only ever overwhelm you once. It's the guys without shields that I'm scared of. Because they just go all in for it. Okay, our money is growing quite nicely. Uh, we want to be quite comfortable with our cash so we can upgrade to tier 3. And then we can have fun with all the cool quests and all the other things you can get with your castle. So, we'll wait. We'll probably not have enough money this episode, but we'll try and do a few more arenas while we wait for our strength to improve. Also, I would love to get our level up. I don't know how close we are to a level. We've been using our potions religiously. Oh, we are so close. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I think the potion ran off. We'll get a new potion. And a new arena fight. Six hyenas? I will... Oh, it's frenzied. Nope. No, 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 no. I'll accept it, then quit it. There's no way we do six frenzies. That is a killer. No way we win that. Okay, back to training. And by the time it gets to tomorrow, we should probably be able to level up. If I was correct with my math. Oh! Cannibal! Hello, hello. Nice melee skill. Nice health. That's actually a pretty decent cannibal. Comes with a fortified mind perk as well. That is a nice cannibal. Uh, too bad you can't be within our empire, buddy. It's a solo empire. But it was nice seeing you. Uh, 299 XP. Did we level up? Oh, we are so close. Ah, uh, we'll have to do the fight. It is three gladiators. I mean, that's better than the hyenas. Oh, you have to put the collar on. I'm always too quick to jump the gun on that. Let's go for it. Okay, a net is a slight issue, but we will just walk backwards. Yep, called it. Let's go. And then we'll go back two spaces. Wait patiently. 
and then walk up for a swing. And give an instant concussion and a broken nose. And almost decimate this poor gladiator. That's what we like to see. And the guy without the shield is the scariest thing on the field. That didn't kill him? Oh. Uh-oh. That was a little scary. But the double kill is helpful. And now it's just you and us, buddy. And I think we can outbeat you in a 1v1. Just just a bit of a hunch. I know you're getting good fast adaptation, but li too little too late, buddy. G, G. And there's our level up that we were looking for. Exactly what we needed. Oh, that feels good. More and more fatigue. Because Bags and Belts is finally here, ladies and gentlemen. It is here. We have a second Berserker Chain. We have our Reach Flail. And we still have fatigue ready and available for any weapon we want to use. How good is that? We have the ability to attack at range. We have the ability to get rid of armor. We have the ability to do amazing damage with the flail up close. And a second one in reserve. And a third one in reserve if we ever so need. That is just perfect. I could even switch this out for a Skullbreaker if I feel like it. And we'd still have enough fatigue to swing every single time we wanted to. Uh, except maybe not when we're equipping the Skullbreaker. I don't know, I'll consider it. I like this setup a little bit better. But that feels so good. How is this Crusader holding five gigantic two-handed weapons? I don't know, it's probably magic. But we are ready and willing. Our pocket money is slowly increasing, which is very nice indeed. Let's continue. A little bit more of an arena montage for the rest of the episode, because... We definitely need the money. But going on into the later parts of the game, we want to get our next level up eventually. It's going to take a while. Because getting to level 31, uh, you can't see it there, sadly. But we're at 29 at the moment. Getting to 31 is our next perk. And I'm leaning towards things like deep impact for extra injuries on enemies. I'm also leaning towards... Maybe Deadly Precision? From all sides, we don't really need. Head Smasher's okay, because it reduces the effectiveness of enemy Steel Brow, and some enemies do have Steel Brow. And increases our damage to the head by 15%. We just want more damage increases, so that's a decent one. Uh, Sundering Strikes gives us armor effectiveness on every single weapon we use. Uh, Deep Impact is Blunt Damage, which is the only type of damage we're using to give more injuries which helps us with Executioner. So I'm leaning towards Deep Impact. I think it's just Deep Impact that I'm really leaning towards. Like, Sundering Strikes is okay. Head Smasher seems okay, but very situational. We only have a 40% chance to hit the head anyways. 45 on that one. And when we switch over to the Hammer, it's only 25%. So, going full flail perks is good, but I don't know if it's the right way to go. I think deep impact is the right way to go, because that affects every weapon we use. And is going to make a big, imp um, big impact. So yeah, we'll probably get that as our next perk. Anyways, next arena up on the chopping block is three gladiators again. Fair enough. The game seems to really want to try and get some scary enemies. But it all depends on their weapons, that's it. And I'm not that afraid of these weapons, except that one's kind of annoying. Gladiators are a hit or a miss. It just really depends on what they're using. Nets and spears, I'm deathly afraid of them. These guys, not so much. Though that guy is annoying because he attacks twice a turn. Yeah, I was going to risk it. 
and go for the move forward and then spin in a circle. Uh, move forward, spin in a circle. Nice. They're gonna probably footwork away, which is really annoying. Yeah, I thought so. So we just go for the kill first. Nice, good kill. And then we come down this way to scare this guy away. Yes, that worked! I was not expecting him to go footwork north, but that works perfectly so we can do this. I was expecting him to footwork somewhere else. But regardless, that is what we like to see. Kill down, and then we just chase this guy across the map. Nice. Drain plug for the win. We are now an arena champion. Yes! It's finally happened! Oh, I love getting arena wins past what you guys normally expect. Because the arena champion has extra bonuses at 25 matches. 15 resolve, 5 hit points, 5% 5 damage, and the 50% chance to be survive if you struck down and not killed by fatality. So that is nice, we get a damage boost permanently. And it's only going to get better from here, because you can get another upgrade at 50 arena wins. Which we've only done once before, so it'll be nice to have it again. Uh, what am I forgetting? Do I have the... Yes, enhanced learning for one more fight. Fair enough. Let's do it. Oh, mercenary company of our own is running around defending the second caravan. Very nice. And our solo empire is looking very nice. Very nice indeed. It has a harbor at the moment, but... Oh, I forgot to mention, you actually have to buy the harbor. It sits there inactive. Um, but we haven't spent money on a harbor yet. It's 15 grand, so it's quite expensive. It is gladiators again. Of course it's glad... It's five gladiators? For less of a price than we fight three gladiators. Um, I'm not actually going to do that. Because the chance of them overwhelming us too much is just way too much of a risk. Yeah, five gladiators is a little bit much. Even for, like, a normal fight of three people. So, we'll give it a pass. Let's get some more food. Eight bandits? That's pretty rough. But it's a lot easier than five gladiators. I might take this risk. Yeah, we'll do this nice big last fight. Ooh, it is a bit of a risk. But I'm willing to take this risk. Two spears. Probably the threat. Uh, what do I want to do? Do I want to go hammers? No, because I want to spin in a circle. And get an insta-kill on a headshot! Oh, that's a good start. I will not say no to that. Sand, of course, is a slight issue. But I think we've got the hang on this fight. Oh, the whip's gonna be annoying. Oh, the drain plug for the win! Oh, the double swing, the double flee, the kill. And our durability took a big hit, but it's not as bad as if we had 64 durability. Ah, oh, famed drain plugs. It's the way to live. Swing again, my friend. That guy was full health. He was literally full health, and he's now dead. Ha 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 ha! This is why 8 Bandits is easier than 5 Gladiators. G G. What a great fight. Good XP. Great damage. Gladiator Harness is nice as well. But most importantly, we're getting paid. And we do need to use up our next Potion of Knowledge before I forget. And we are kind of getting close to the next level, but it's still going to be a long ways away. And then we have to get a level after that for the next perk. 
Uh, we bumped ourselves back up to 30 grand, which is very, very nice for next episode. Uh, 20 grand can get us to tier 3 in the castle. So I think we should be able to have enough money to jump the castle up. We're not really spending much at the moment these days. But once we start earning more, I will get ourselves possibly the uh, weaponsmith to then try and farm for famed weapons. But regardless of farming for a famed weapon, we got one today, and I feel amazing about it. That was just a wonderful, wonderful thing to get. Not a gigantic upgrade, but an upgrade regardless. Anyways, I uh, hope you really enjoyed the episode today. I hope you are loving the Stronghold mod like I am. We've got still so much more to do, so I am keen to show you the rest of the mod. Uh, we might be able to build a big empire. We might not, seeing how we go for the rest of the series. But we will definitely try and stack this city itself, the Solo Empire building itself, as good as we can get it. Which means more arena fights with money, and more fancy tier 3 quests from the castle itself. But regardless, I hope you're enjoying, and we'll have to catch you in the next one. See yous.